Universal Center for Renovation Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. Of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. From whence comes the black nobility of Europe? Queen Charlotte. 1744 to 1818, Queen of Great Britain and of Ireland, wife of King George III, last queen of the American 13 colonies. Alessandro di Medici, Duke of Florence, Italy, 1510 to 1537. Nicknamed Il Moro, Maurice, the Medici Bank was the largest bank in Europe during its prime. Four popes were from the Medici family. Saint Maurice, born A.D. 250, patron saint in Europe, or possibly Maurice Elector of Saxony, 1521 to 1553. Many writers and historians, professionals and lay people have made many attempts to explain the mystery of the presence of so many prominent people of color in European history. Their artifacts exist throughout Europe in churches, castles, public squares, museums, and private collections. We find their history in ancient, medieval, and renaissance times as kings, queens, warriors, priests, poets, heroes, and villains, rich and poor. Stories of high adventure and romance have fascinated the peoples of the world from time immemorial concerning the lives of these people Hopefully, the history of the origin of these moors will generate some more appreciation for the treasure of culture and wisdom they have left us. Ruddy. A word used to refer to a red or fair complexion in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 12, chapter 17 verse 42, Song of Solomon chapter 5 verse 10. Dark skin of the Hebrews. American anthropologist, January, March, 1903. Physical anthropology of the Jews. Chapter two, pigmentation by Morris Fishberg. The type of the Jew is dark. The ancient Hebrews were characterized as having dark hair. The ideal beauty of Semites or Shemites has been raven black hair. Jacob's quotes a Mishnic rabbi R. Ishmael who says, the sons of Israel are like boxwood, neither black nor white, but between the two, i.e., 
that is to say, of olive color. The Talmud appears to use the term black, shikar, as synonymous with both hair and youth. Bible Hub Shakur Shakur Black Definition Black Shakur Black Definition Black Leviticus Chapter 13 Verse 31 KJV then the skin, and that there is no black hair. Songs of Solomon 1 5, KJV. I am black but comely. Shakur is used for black hair in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 31. In reference of black skin, Song of Solomon chapter 1. Verse 5 Rabbi Ishmael described the color of Israel as boxwood. Rabbi Ishmael ben Elisha Nachmani, often known as Rabbi Ishmael and sometimes given the title Baal Ha Barita was a rabbi of the first and second centuries. If we take a closer look at the life of Rabbi Ishmael he was a descendant of a wealthy priestly family in Upper Galilee. His year of birth was 90 CE. He was captured by the Romans as a young boy, but redeemed by Rabbi Joshua ben Hananiah, Rabbi Nehunya ben Hakana became his teacher, and he remained a close colleague of Rabbi Joshua he is likely the grandson of the high priest of the same name. He lived in Kafar Aziz, south of Hebron. Sephria is the largest free library of Jewish texts available to read online in Hebrew and English, including Torah, Tanakh, Talmud, Mishnah, Midrash, Commentaries. Sephira, Mishnah Nagayim 2, by Dr. Joshua Koop. Rabbi Ishmael says, The children of Israel, may I be atoned for them, are like boxwood, neither black nor white, but of an intermediate shade. Jazz Trial, London. Luzak, 1903. Box tree or ebony tree, like the Ishkroa. Neither black nor white, but of an intermediate color. This is Mishnah Hebrew, not Biblical Hebrew. Neither black nor white. Let's take a look, a closer look at that term. 
by opening up the book Bound for Freedom, Black Los Angeles and Jim Crow America by Douglas Fleming. Page 42, Creoles were an important group in Louisiana. Historically, they were neither white nor black, but something in between. No one could say for certain what the exact formula for a Creole was, but they were a group set apart. They were free people of color. Holmes de Cula Libra. Well educated and known for their skills in the building trades. Creoles. Neither white nor black. Illustrations of free people of color, Creoles. The Curse of Ham, Race and Slavery, in Early Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, by David M. Goldenberg. Page 116. We can see the difficulty of determining an absolute color value among the various shade differences of the Jewish population. Thus, Kushi and Germani are meant to indicate the dark-skinned and light-skinned Jews. It could be argued that the terms retain the original meaning of Nubian and German and that these peoples are meant to exemplify extreme skin color rather than that by transference. The terms have come to mean very dark skinned and very light skinned. Most medieval commentators, however, including High Goen, assume that Germani and Cushi have a transferred meaning of light skinned and dark skinned. Among the Jews themselves, the terms Cushi have come to mean a very dark skinned Jew and Germani, a very light-skinned Jew. Cush, the Bible. Cush. According to the Hebrew Bible, was the oldest son of Ham and a grandson of Noah. He was the brother of Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Cush is identified in the Bible with the kingdom of Cush or ancient Sudan. Identification. Cush is a Hebrew name that is possibly derived from Cash, 
the Egyptian name of Loa Nubia and later of the Nubian kingdom at Napata, known as the kingdom of Cush. Etymology, the Greek name Ethiopia from Ethiops and Ethiopian is a compound derived of two Greek words, Ethio, I burn, plus Ops, face. This designation properly translates in noun form as burnt face and in adjectival form as red brown as such it was used as a vague term for dark skinned populations since the time of homer cushy very dark skinned sunburnt like an ethiopian The Personal Physical Appearance of Jesus Christ Blue Letter Bible Revelations 1 and 15 And his feet like unto fine brass As if they burned in a furnace Unto fine brass Chacoli Bannon Burnished copper fine brass fine brass equal burnish copper page 244 of hebrewisms of west africa fulani the poles poles fulas fubi or futes dark complexioned red bronzed copper colored Fulani equal dark complexion, copper colored. Fulani people, brass, copper color. The personal physical appearance of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1 and 15 and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burnt in a furnace. Burnt brass, copper. Ethiopian equal burnt face. Darker than brass, copper. Cushy, very dark skinned. Sunburnt, like an Ethiopian. Germani cis renini. Wikipedia. The Germani Cisrenini, Latin, Cisrenaeus, on this side of the Rhine, referring to the Roman or Western side or left bank Germani, were a group of Germanic peoples who lived west of the lower Rhine at the time of the Gaelic Wars in the mid first century BC. These Germani was first described by Julius Caesar. Tacitus writing about 100 AD when the region had been part of the Roman Empire referred to these Germani. The Germani name had by this time become a term used more commonly to refer to many other peoples. Germani, very light skinned, like a German, or to look like a German. Israelites who were Germani, Germani, like someone from the north, very white, fair, according to Maimonides, Germani, and Talmudic terminology, Ruck. Hashalem meant someone from the far north, 
at that time or who looked like people from that area, the term could be applied, Maimonides, to a very light colored person like part of the people of Scandinavia. Maimonides, Spanish Jewish philosopher, 1138 to 1204. Their mothers were blondes. Dura Europis Synagogue, 256 A.D. Syria. Discovery of Dera Europis Synagogue, 1920 A.D. Life-size paintings on its walls. The Hebrew synagogue was particularly unusual because it contained a number of life-size paintings on its walls. These included scenes of Moses parting the sea, the return of the ark, the anointment of David, as well as images of many other biblical events. Dera Europis Synagogue Here was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. This is a direct quote from the book, The Black Presence in the Lands of the Bible, page 15. Second Kings, chapter 15, verse 29. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, and captured all the land of Naphtali, including Asheroth, Carnaim, also known as Astartu, and carried them captive to Assyria. A map of the 12 tribes of Israel around 1200 to 1050 BC, according to the book of Joshua. To the right of this map is highlighted in a yellow circle, the tribe of Naphtali. To the right of that, highlighted within a red circle, the city Ashtaroth. Below that is a bas relief from the Assyrian Empire showing the tribe of Naphtali being led away captive from the city of Ashtaroth. Assyrians attacking a city of the northern kingdom of Israel. The Assyrians came back in 722 to 721 BC and removed the ten tribes of Israel out of Israel and brought them to Assyria. This relief is hugely important because it shows the beginning of the exile of the ten tribes of Israel. They never returned. Several kingdoms in the Levant ceased to pay taxes to the Assyrian king, Sennacherib. In retribution, he initiated a campaign to resubjugate the rebelling kingdoms, among them the kingdom of Judah. After defeating the rebels of Akron and Philistia, Sennacherib set out to conquer Judah and on his way to Jerusalem came across Lachish, the second most important of the Jewish cities. Siege of Lachish 
southern kingdom of Judah. Siege of Lachish. The siege of Lachish was the Neo-Assyrian Empire's siege and conquest of the town of Lachish in 701 BCE. The siege is documented in several sources, including the Hebrew Bible, Assyrian documents, and in the Lachish relief, a well-preserved series of reliefs which once decorated the Assyrian king Sennacherib's palace at Nineveh. Siege of Lachish, part of Sennacherib's campaign in the Levant. Assyrian siege engine attacking the city wall of Lachish, part of the ascending assaulting wave. Detail of a war relief dating back to the reign of Sennacherib, 700 to 692 BCE, from Nineveh, Iraq, currently housed in the British Museum, date 701 BCE, location, Lachish, Kingdom of Judah, result, Assyrian victory, Lachish captured. Judean captives being led away into slavery by the Assyrians after the siege of Lachish in 701 BC. This relief is important for the knowledge of Judean dress. The fall of Lachish. King Sennacherib reviews Judean prisoners. The Oxford Encyclopedia of Archaeology in the Near East. Volume 3. Page 320. Lachish. Assyrian Conquest. The level 3 city was destroyed in 701 BCE by Sennacherib, king of Assyria. Campaigning in Judah, Sennacherib established his camp at Lachish. 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 14 and 17. Isaiah chapter 36 verse 2. Chapter 37, verse 8. Second Chronicles, chapter 32, verse 9. And from there sent a task force to challenge King Hezekiah in Jerusalem. When the destruction of Lachish was complete, its inhabitants were deported. Southern Kingdom. Assyrian Relief. Hebrews in captivity, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Starkly uncovered a mass burial, the scattered, disarticulated skeletons of about 1,500 individuals in a few adjoining caves that may be associated with the Assyrian attack. D.L. Resden 1939 has studied 695 skulls belonging to men, women, and children. Three had been trepanned, meaning drilling holes in the skull. Curiously, the crania bear a close racial resemblance to the contemporary population of Egypt. The Oxford Encyclopedia of Archaeology in the Near East, page 321. Amri, Wikipedia, Amri, Hebrew, Armaria, Akkadian, Humri, Hugh Amri, 9th century BC, was, according to the Hebrew 
Bible, the sixth king of Israel, he was a successful military campaigner who extended the northern kingdom of Israel. Omri is the second king mentioned in the Bible without a statement of his tribal origin. One possibility, though unproven, is that he was of the tribe of Issachar. Extra biblical sources, such as the Mishi Steli and the Black Obelisk of Shalmaneser III, also mentions his name. However, in the case of the Black Obelisk, the reference is to the dynasty name for Omri rather than to Omri himself. Wikipedia, Jehu. Jehu was the 10th king of the northern kingdom of Israel since Jeroboam the first. He was the son of Jehoshaphat, grandson of Nimshai, and possibly great grandson of Omri. The tribute of Jehu of the people of the land of Omri, depicted on the black obelisk of Shalmaneser III. Jehu, king of northern Israel, reign 841 to 814 BCE. Wikipedia Amrides, the Amrides or Amrids or House of Amri, Hebrew by Yath Amarya, Akkadian, Bit Himri, were a ruling dynasty of the kingdom of Israel, Samaria, founded by King Amri. Five Assyrian records, some of which were known duplicates, are known to refer to either land of Amri or house of Amri. Who were the Sumerians and where did they come from? By Anne Katrina Gade Christensen. Here ends our supposition and we now arrive at the question, who were in fact the Sumerians? In reality, the answer as to who the Sumerians were has been given long ago and has been known since the last century, perhaps even earlier. Not, however, by established scholarly research, but by a long series of people who showed up with different backgrounds. People who asked themselves the question. What did in fact become of the Israelites who were deported already at the time of Tiglath Pileser III and later on? After the conquest of Samaria in 722 to Assyria and in the latter case also to the cities of media. For them, there is no doubt the Sumerians were Israelites who came from the northern kingdom of Israel and wherever and whenever Assyrian and later sources refer to Sumerians, we are in fact dealing with deported Israelites. Already Sir Henry Rawlinson, it has been claimed, was cognizant of this identity, and he is quoted as having made the following statement. We have reasonable grounds for regarding the Gemari or Sumerians who first appeared on the confines of Assyria and Media in the 7th 
century BC in the Saka of the Behustun rock. Nearly two centuries later, as identical with Beth Kumri of Samaria or the ten tribes of the house of Israel. The proof which has been provided for the identity of the Israelites with the Sumerians is of a philological nature. The northern kingdom of Israel was known by several names at the time. Among them, Beth Omri, the house of Omri, named after the founder of Samaria, Omri, the king of northern Israel, who lived in the ninth century. When the Assyrians referred to North Israel, they always used the name Beth Omri, which was rendered as Bit Humeri. When Omri could be rendered as Humeri, then. According to Pinches, it shows that at the time the name was pronounced Gomeri. In accordance with the older system before game became Ayin. And as much as the Assyrians had no G or GH in their language, they had to represent it by a character which may be transliterated KH, GH, or H, according to choice. In Assyrian, therefore, Beth Omri is renderable by Bit Kumrai, Bit Gumrai, or Bit. Um, right, as may be preferred. So Hane writes, and he goes on to say, the Assyrian word, which may be transliterated, Kumrai, Gumrai, or Humrai, expressed the same idea and stood in the same degree of relation to its Hebraic Etman, Omri, as did the Babylonian word Gemeri or Gemera. The Assyrians did not call them Israel, but designated them as Bit Humri or the like. At the time of Esar Hadan, Gomri was written Gemeri, Sumerians. These are the arguments of those scholars. But it is not only at the time of Esar Hadan that the term Gemariya occurs, yet in the letters Datable to the reign of Sargon, this term Ker Gai Mer Adya occurs in one single letter only. Otherwise, at the time of this king, we find terms like Ker Ga Mer, Ker Ga Mera, Lu Ga Mera Adya. It may be taken for granted that there is a linguistic relationship between Omri and the terms used for Sumerians. But one may wonder why the Assyrians would have applied these terms for deportees from the house of Omri, when so far in their inscriptions they have used the term Humri. The arguments adduced by the students of the ten tribes amount to the possibility that there may have been two different ways in which the Assyrians attempted to render the Hebrew Omri. Incidentally, the Hebrew word for Sumerians, Goma, appears to be rather close to the older form, Omri. When established scholarship, if you like, so far has either ignored or perhaps been ignorant about the idea of an identity between those who were deported from the country of Omri and the Sumerians. The philological connection between Omri and Gemeri has been so conclusive to the students of the ten tribes that they have made no attempt to refute the prevalent Sumerian theory in a traditional manner. Let us consider where the deported 
Israelites were taken. According to Assyrian sources, at the beginning of his reign, Sargon had 27,290 inhabitants of Samaria led into captivity. Peoples from all countries whom my hands have made prisoners, I caused to dwell there. My functionary as prefect over them, I place and tribute and tax I oppose upon them as if they were Assyrians. Tribes from the Arabian desert were settled in Samaria. Second Kings chapter 17 expresses the opinion that all of Israel, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, were abducted into captivity so that now only the tribe of Judah, the Jews, were left. There's scarcely reason any longer to doubt the exciting and verily astonishing assertion propounded by the students of the ten tribes that the Israelites deported from Bit Humeri of the house of Omri are identical with the Gemaraja of the Assyrian sources. Israelite deportees did not vanish from the picture, but that abroad and under new conditions, they continued to leave their mark on history. Ragol de Barbazel, Wikipedia. Ragol de Barbazel was a troubadour, 1140 to 1163, of the petty nobility of Saint-Ange. He was a great influence on the Sicilian school and is quoted in the Roman de la Rose. About 15 of his poems survive, including one plain and nine or ten castles. His name is sometime given as Richard or Rich Starts. Life. While the dates of his life are disputed, some maintaining a later career, 1170 to 1215, the general consensus is that he was an early troubadour. According to his vita, the reliability of which is highly doubtful, he was a poor knight from the castle of Barbazu near Cognac in the diocese of Santis. He was described as a capable and handsome, but soup miles troubar, cute and tendri, Naku Deri. He knew better how to compose poetry than to listen to it or recite it. He was reputed by the author of the Vita to be timid, especially in the company of noblemen, but to sing in a charming way with encouragement. Castle of Barbazel History. It is generally accepted that Ragu was indeed from a family who had been deputies of the lord of the castle of Barbazu. His family was probably distantly related to that of Joffrey Rodel through the counts of Angoulême. He himself was probably the younger of two sons, but he married into an Angoulême family of rank. His entire life seemed to have been spent in the region just south of Angoulême. And a post-1157 document refers to his entering a monastery. Israelites, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, also called Sumerians, Gemerai, Bit Humerai, House of Omri, migrated into Russia, Scythia, Europe, and Britain. Chronica Digestis Hungaroruma Hungarian Chronicles The region of Scythia is situated in Europe and stretches towards the east. Its eastern limit is Asia and its western is the river Ethel, Volga or Don River. Its people indulge themselves to a natural acts of venery. They love to go on forays. And in complexion, they 
are generally black rather than white. AD 1225 from the Chronica de Justice Hungarorum, page 69. Scythia, Wikipedia. Scythia was a region of central Eurasia and classical antiquity occupied by the Eastern Iranian Scythians and encompassing Central Asia and parts of Eastern Europe, east of the Vistula River. The Scythians controlled large swaths of territory throughout Eurasia, from the Black Sea across Siberia to the borders of East Asia. Magog, Bible, Wikipedia. Magog is the second of the seven sons of Japhet mentioned in the Table of Nations in Genesis chapter 10. Magog, Scythia, Russia. Magog, Wikipedia article. Ancient and medieval views. Josephus refers to Magog, son of Japhet, as progenitor of Scythians. Wikipedia article, Scythians, the Scythians, also known as Saka, were an ancient nomadic people living primarily in the region known as Scythia. In what is modern day Ukraine and southern Russia, and were led by a nomadic warrior aristocracy known as the Royal Scythians. The Scythians were part of the wider Scythian cultures stretching across the Eurasian steppes. In a broader sense, Scythians has also been used to designate or early Eurasian nomads. Wikipedia Article, Eurasian Nomads. The Eurasian Nomads were a large group of nomadic peoples from the Eurasian steppe who often appear in history as invaders of Europe, Western Asia, Central Asia, Eastern Asia, and South Asia. The generic title encompasses the varied ethnic groups who have at times inhabited the steppes of Central Asia, Mongolia, and what is now Russia and Ukraine. They domesticated the horse around 3500 BCE, vastly increasing the possibility of nomadic life, and subsequently their economy and culture emphasized horse breeding, horse riding, and nomadic pastoralism. This usually involved trading with settled peoples around the steppe edges. They developed the chariot, wagon, cavalry, and horse archery. The Scythians, sons of Magog, son of Japhet, son of Noah. Persepolis. Persia, Iran, 559 BC, Scythians, Magog.
glimpses of our Celtic ancestors. Introduction. Professor Rawlinson says that the Celts, who were the first people who arrived in Europe from Asia, their birthplace, pushed out the sons of Japheth, and also that a people known as Sumeri or Gemeri attained to power in Western Asia and Eastern Europe between B.C. 800 to 600. Celts, Israelites, pushed out the sons of Japheth. Ten tribes of Israel. Second Esdras, chapter 13, verse 40 to 45. The ten tribes went to Osareth, another land where mankind never dwelt, the Americas. The Ten Lost Tribes, A World History by Zevi ben Dor ben Knight. The author of Esdras understood the ten tribes as removed from the Oikoimene. But while all humans were dispersed, and certainly the Jews were, the ten tribes remained isolated and intact. Wikipedia article, Ecumeni, the Ecumeni, U.S. spelling, or Acumeni, U.K. spelling, Greek. Acumeni, literally inhabited, is an ancient Greek term for the known, the inhabited, or the habitable world. In Greek antiquity, it referred to the portions of the world known to Hellenic geographers, subdivided into three continents, Africa, Europe, and Asia. Only the Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, lived in Africa, Europe, and Asia. A modern depiction of the ecumeny described by Herodotus in the 5th century BC. Esdras understood the ten tribes removed from the Oikoimene, Africa, Europe, and Asia. Wikipedia article, 10 Lost Tribes. These are the tribes of Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, Manasseh, and Ephraim, all but Judah and Benjamin, as well as some members of Levi, the priestly tribe, which did not have its own territory. The Jewish historian Josephus, 37 to 100 CE, wrote that there are but two tribes in Asia and Europe subject to the Romans, while the ten tribes are beyond Euphrates till now and are an immense multitude and not to be estimated by numbers. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi only in Europe. The British Israelites, the Sakai, Scythians, Anglo-Saxons. Sir Henry Rawlinson says, the ethnic name of Gemeri occurs in the cuneiform records as the Shemitic equivalent of the Aryan name Saka or Sakai. The Sakai Scythians were termed the Gemeri by their Semite neighbors. 
the Sakan or Scythic population, which was widely spread over the Persian Empire. Israelites, Scythians, Anglo Saxons, Saka, and Gemerai. Israelite, Scythians, Saka, and Gemerai. Israelites in Scythia, Eurasian steppe nomads. An illustrated history of Ireland from the earliest period. Map of Ireland. Page 32. The Scythians, the Irish analysts, claim a descent from the Scythians. Wikipedia article. Sailors. The Sailors were a powerful and warlike tribe or tribal confederation of ancient Britain. The Sailors usually had a dark complexion and curly hair. Some theories concerning King Arthur makes him a leader in this area. The Agricola and Germania of Tacitus, the Agricola of Tacitus, the swarthy complexion of the Sailors and the frequency of curling hair among them. King Arthur, Arthur slaying the swine eating Spanish giant on the island of Mont St. Michael and rescuing Helena, niece of Hoel of Brittany, Jean de Waven, Anciens et Navelle, Chronique de Angleterre. Volume 1, Bruce, after 1471 and before 1483. King Arthur, King of the Sealers. King Arthur, King of the Sealers. Dark complexion and curly hair. Collection of ancient and Modern British Authors, The History of the Anglo-Saxons, The Early Occupation of Europe by the Cimmerian and Celtic Races has been already displayed. The next stream of barbaric tribes whose progress formed the second great influx of population into Europe were the Scythian, German, and Gothic tribes, the Anglo-Saxons, Lowland, Scotch, Normans, Danes, Norwegians, Swedes, Germans, Dutch, Belgians, Lombards, and Franks have all sprung from that great fountain of the human race, which we have distinguished by the terms Scythian. Ireland information. Black Irish. Who were the Black Irish? Who were the Black Irish? Black Irish is often a description of people of Irish origin who had dark features, black hair, dark complexion, and eyes. The Vikings were often referred to as the dark invaders or black foreigners. The Gaelic word for foreigner is Gaul and for black or dark is dub. The name Doyle is in Irish O Dub Gao, which literally means dark foreigner. The traditional image of Vikings is of pale-skinned 
blonde haired invaders, but their description as dark foreigners may lead us to conclude that their memory and folklore does not just depend on their physical description. Vikings, dark foreigners. Thumbnail from the previous video. Odin, Gudan, Odin, God, Guda, God, a great chieftain, successful warrior who was deified, dehumanized. The historian's hut. The fatal curse over the Inglings dynasty. Inglings saga from Odin to Halfdan the Black. The fatal curse over the Ingling dynasty. King Harold Finehair brought all of Norway under his influence in the later half of the 9th century and continued to rule over Norway until his death around the year 940. His successors are often labeled as the Finehair dynasty. But Harold supposedly claimed lineage from an even more ancient line, royal line, which was said to link all the way back to the Norse gods. According to Scandinavian tradition, Harold Finehair was a member of the Engling dynasty. The Icelandic scholar Snorri Sturluson 1179-1241 wrote an account of this peculiar family in his Engling saga. He began with pure myth and gradually moved through legend, semi-legend, and finally folklore-laden history to reach the more factual grounded time of Harold Finehair. According to legend, the first two members of the family were gods. And if calculations are correct, Harold Finehair was supposedly the 35th ruling member of the England dynasty. Yet, despite the supposedly divine origin of their family, the Englings were very, very unlucky, according to the saga. 25 of Harold's 34 predecessors died violent, accidental, or simply unnatural deaths. The England saga begins with an interesting theory that suggests Odin and the Norse gods migrated from a location near the Black Sea and eventually traveled across Europe to ultimately settle Sweden, where Odin founded a kingdom, the Black Sea and Scythia. Map Sweden After a long reign, Odin handed the control of his kingdom over to another god from outside his family. The successor's name was Enjord, and he was technically the founder of the Engling dynasty. The dynasty, however, was actually named after Enjord's son and successor, Frey, a popular god who apparently also went by the name of Engvi. Hence the family name of Engling. The personal luck of these two god kings were said to have been very positive during their time as rulers over a Swedish kingdom. After the reign of Frey, however, the Engling dynasty suffered an unbelievable fall from grace. Here are the bizarre fates of the Engling dynasty members, beginning with Frey's son and ending with Harold's fine hair's father, Halfdan the Black. Halfdan the Black 
is the first member of the Engling dynasty who is believed to have been a real person by most historians. According to sagas and scholastic poems, he carved out a large domain in southeastern Norway, giving his famous son Harald Finehair a powerful base from which to bring the Norwegians under the influence of a single monarchy. Nevertheless, even the mighty Halfdan the Black was not exempt from the Engling curse. He allegedly fell through thin ice on Lake Rans for Jordan and drowned. Halfdan the Black, a real person. Wikipedia article Halfdan the Black. Halfdan the Black. Halfdaner Svati, 9th century, was a king of Lisfold. He belonged to the House of England and was the father of Harold Fairhair, the first king of a united Norway. Swati's Swathi, Black. Wikipedia article Harold Fairhair. Harold the First Fair here, 850 to 932, was a Norwegian king, according to traditions current in Norway and Iceland in the 12th and 13th century. He reigned from 872 to 930 and was the first king of Norway. Meaning of epithet, Harfagri, in English, fair-haired means blonde. Harold previously bore lufa, thick, matted hair. Harold I, fair hair, was a Israelite and a person of color like his father. Ancient and Modern Britons, Volume 1, David McRitchie. The Norman knight on the cover is a Norman knight from the heraldic collection, 1504 to 1534. This book was first published in London in 1884. Page 120, Ancient and Modern Britons. Also Harold Harfager himself, whose appellation alone would hint that fair hair was an exceptional feature among his people, was the son of Halfdan Swasi, or the Black. It is therefore to be presumed that the fair hair was inherited from a white mother. 